Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from the host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of the Reich, Defender of the Fuzzland. Here to lay around your eyes, and here's another exciting propaganda cast on tomorrow, but let's imagine it's somewhere in Holland. Dutch Simwa. Yeah. Anyways, we will be watching Blood and Roses taking on the fight of the Kampfgruppe Hermann Göring, formed up from the replacement and training battalions of the Hermann Göring Panzer Division, which for some bizarre reason while the division fought on the Eastern Front was placed in or in Holland. I never quite got that one. On the other hand, we still will be watching IKEA, so is it LCS? I'm not entirely sure I'm supposed to pronounce that, but nonetheless, fighting for the Commonwealth, fighting for the 11th Armoured, supporting the 7th. No, the Irish Armoured Guards with the 30th Armoured Corps pushing up through Holland. We are seeing a pretty, pretty bold push in there by the Kenkart going for the strategic cutoff right there. He might be hoping to sort of de establish a delaying position right there, you know. Deny resources. Or at least, you know, sort of stall them while they're trying to move out there. We also seeing the Kenkart closing up. He might be trying to go for this one and delay the headquarters command track as well. And he's, of course, he has, of course, gone Luftwaffe. And he wheels himself right in front of the infantry section, which... It's perhaps not the wisest of decisions, just saying. And clearly the infantry section is not interested in the latest magazine of Luftwaffe Weekly. Do see some Panzers here, they could in fact be moving in, then we're seeing a second can crown out, so of course, right there of course, they are most access players do tend to go for this, and this of course is going for one of the British larger weaknesses, which of course is they can't seize a lot of territory initially, so again... The Panzer player focused on that, of course, gaining the territorial advantage against the British that way, hoping to turn the larger amount of resources towards the British player and crush him beneath piles of munitions and fuel. Not literally, of course. That's just silly. There you go, we are seeing some Panzer grenades moving in, opening up on the Brits. Pulling a bit back. Recce section a bit under fire from the house. Three Panzer guns flying out the windows, about right, about right for that amount of Panzer gun deers, in fact. More Brits are moving in though. A larger force moving up. We're seeing a third Kitten Crown. On the other hand, that might be a bit excessive, rather limiting his combat power. And here, I think, Blood and Roses makes what you'd call a bit of a mistake. Brain carrying on the way, but note here how many men are in that house? Six. How many windows are there? Three here, where most of the ha fighting is happening, and one there, where mu some might happen. What does that mean? It means there's a lot of troops basically standing about, doing nothing, looking out the window, and basically going, gee, I wish I hadn't made that rude joke about the third people. Now I'm missing out on all the fun. And again, that's a waste of troops. It basically means some are just going to be taking damage for no apparent reason. Again, he would have been better served off if someone had been out here instead again. I mean, he's not doing much. I mean, again, sort of note count windows. How much troops they're putting into it. Will they actually be able to do anything? If not, don't bother. I mean, stuff like, for example, one window, that's more the job on a machine gun or some sort of automatic weapon. This, for example, with five windows here, six, in fact, great. Two, mm, not so good. But again, you know, one, not good. Again, five, great. Two, yeah. Three, all right, if we're Panzer but again, otherwise, one, get an MG in there if possible. I mean, stuff like that, you know, is also important to note. Count windows, pay attention to them. Yes, sir. And for example, also note some buildings, for example, this church has an knowledge team. Most of the windows, in fact, are use not usable, so you can only have one firing out of the side, for example. So the church is mostly MG sniper territory. And again, also note what follows next. They're just doing nothing. They could have moved forward, taken it back, or done something, but again, nothing happens. Same here, they're just looking out the windows, enjoying the scenery. Ignore, trying to ignore the screaming of their comrades as they die as they stand inside, enjoying a nice cold lager. We are seeing the prank here, they're pushing up with a lieutenant, although again, this is not really solid play by Isaias. He could of course risk one shot and the lieutenant is going to be wishing he had gotten himself a cup of tea. We do see a bit of harassment again from both players. Going straight for the fuel point, of course, also note the rather low amount of resources, or met for that matter, combat power on the field that the German player has is rather limiting his response. There's not much you can actually do against all of this, which is actually giving the British player an initial advantage overall. So now, of course, you can just sort of rain havoc upon the Germans. I mean, he's certainly done a bit of work here against the Brits here, but 
Ultimately, though, he's also suffered a bit, and there's certainly also some rather vital resource points which are being lost. We do see a field support going up, but again, also note this is what you'd call a heavy tier 1 start from the Brits. Three infantry sections, a Bren carry, and a lieutenant. And of course, yeah, we are finally seeing a bit of a reaction towards this, but again, not much going on. Going for the other points. More Panzer guns arriving, and these should just get out. And here's another good ruling, particularly when fighting the Brits. You should never retreat when you're down to one man. Always retreat if you're down to two or three men on low health in particular. If you're facing off against Bren Gunners, that is extremely vital. I know it might not sound sensible, but I mean, Brits really can't have Rose Squad, in particular Bren Cows, if they're low on health. And particular, never mind also if they have a recce section here with just one sniper shot, and oh dear, I've lost a squad. So I'm be very, very careful when fighting with the Brits and retreating from the Brits. They really have a nasty habit of being able to punish the one who's not careful when he's retreating. We do see the field support truck up. And we do see a squad actually went down right there. Of course, low health got cut down by the brain carrying infantry section. And this is less good. One thing to note about buildings, most are nice, but also note, if you're talking about a fully wooden shed, they actually don't provide much protection. It's sort of funny, but it doesn't. And also again, note the window rule. Flat feeling opening up, firing away at the Bren carrier. Panzer is pulling up, defense about raising up. Logistic company up. Bren carrier taking a bit of damage. And Bren carrier pulling away. I mean, the Panzer player does have most of the territory, but at the same time, I mean... He's been able to do some damage to the German player. We are seeing a kit and crack gone. The lieutenant, though, needs to get away. He does so. And there's nothing here because, again, not a lot of infantry or all for Blats and Roses and all that other stuff. Field support truck is out. Captain on the way, so soon there'll be a steward, probably. And we are seeing the panzer support come out, so Matt goes for an anti tank half tank. Not necessarily the, the best choice to go in singularly against the steward. You usually want either more of them, of course, or some support in the form of a panzer strike, but he can't go that because he went straight for this one and not the Kampfgruppe Company. So that could actually hurt him. Brenko, though, might get, get cut down, but we are seeing the recce section moving in to intersperse themselves and, well, place themselves in between the two forces and save the Brenko carrier. Troops reinforcing there, or should be reinforcing Harold. And again, note here, he actually is retreating, but again, note, you know, two windows, not nearly as effective as, again, if they've been firing up here. So again, those are some details to note. This is a good move, could also provide some healing for the lieutenant, so he might survive a bit longer. But the Panzer Support Command is up for the Kampfgruppe. And again, I mean, it's really odd, because again, the Hammond going had its Panzer replacement and training battalions for its Panzer Grenadiers and its Panzer units in Holland, which again was quite far away. Usually they will be much closer to the parent division. That's sort of the thing that always sort of confused me, but I mean again, it rather meant though they actually had some decent troops and a bit of armor as well in that sense in Holland, which again probably wasn't being so much counted on. Granted, they mostly had some old Panzer Force and Sturmgeschutz. Nothing in the heavier end of things. Going in there for the cutoff point again. How much now? What little resource? I mean, interestingly, you note the player has British player hasn't bothered moving in here. Could easily send in a captain, do some harassment here, and cut off a lot of resources from the German player. But we are now seeing the steward light tank out, out and clearly not moving, buzzing a bit, in fact. Other well, sound thing, Panzer's moving about here, and again, note now we are seeing full effectiveness for the mini recce section, as all four are firing on troops in negative cover. That's nice, and we're using a push up here as well. Stewart. With the recuse section officer. Well, the observation officer. And there we go. Light anti tank half track out. Actually, a platoon commander vehicle. And. Oh, he just makes it worse. Heinz! Don't stuff all your troops in there. And again, note. A lot of troops in the building, but again, not really much of them doing anything. Had they been spread out, they'd been able to do more. And the light anti-tank half is fighting over here instead of trying to deal with the <laughs> Stuart light tank. I mean, there's a lot of problems there.
Stewart though is moving away. We do have some minor losses for the Panzer Grenades inside, and the house is a lot more windy. Now we're going mobilized. But of course, the half tank is a bit under fire from all the nearby infantry. Because again, you know, there's no infantry further out to help it. And now, in fact, he's being pulled back. He's only mobilized it here. I mean, he makes another mistake. Besides, you know, perhaps waiting for them to move forward again and mobilize in a better position for him. And here, he should have pulled back. But also, I mean, he still goes for it instead of, you know, realizing, I mean, the pan German British player is going to easily be able to repair that damage. Which, of course, means this needs to get back and to the base. Needs to get back to the base and, you know, get that all loaded up. And now, notice, Panzer Support Command upgrade. Munitions. Half track. And Panzer Grenadiers. Alright, this is a bit weird. He must have been floating out of resources, which is never good. And also, no, he's got 300 some munitions, though he can't actually use it on anything. And now, of course, after having been quickly repaired, the anti tank half track is pretty much buggered. It can't do anything. Which again was not really clear from him, and we are seeing a bit of fighting over here again, going for the fuel point. Nicely done, nicely done. And looks like he's actually researched anti-tank grenades, which is dangerous work. And there we go, and it's not necessarily the best option either. It's only because it takes some time to reload, and again, it's not going to necessarily knock it out. I mean, the area of using it was great but again it needs to be used in conjunction with something else like say a mobilized piece of armor and generally though and this is also quite important it should never ever ever be your primary method of knocking out armor which is currently is I mean you should not go right now and knock it out with anti-tank grenades ich will be in hero of the third reich and no you won't be it should be a supplement not the main job you should either have panzer effects or something like that when you're dealing with British armor. He doesn't. And a squad here which should have retreated. Didn't quite finish that off, so more infantry would be needed. Forty Megas out, that's nice, although he's sensitive enough for not upgrading them. British forces are moving in against the Forty Megas. He's actually upgrading. Oh no. Need more infantry and need something to deal with the Stuart Light tanks. A four point is not going to deal with that. And there we go, cancelling it. Forty Megas retreating, should have gone FT forty shoes by the fallen by the way. Kent crowd here taking damage. Forces are retreating, a full retreat in fact from Blood and Horses of the Kampfgruppe Hermann Göring. They're now with Forty Mega support from Coach Students first Forty Mega Army, which had also been formed largely that of some really untrained personnel which has suddenly become Forty Mega. A lot of them, though, were not really no Forty Megas as the one that fought in Normandy or Crete. And saying the quality was with it by that stage dropping quite a bit. And some of them didn't even get, you know, the standard Forty Megas helmets, but rather had to do with the regular army hel helmets with the Luftwaffe stamp on it. Send your orders. Attention, the enemy Stewards moving about. Lots of Stewards. He's also used the Munitions half track track to mine, which is quite interesting. Quite rare. Nice on the mine, and there we go, damaged engine. Panzer IV on the way, that's not bad. Clearly some sort of supply, half track. Which is was also used, I suppose, a bit. There we go, Forge Mega moving in, probably going to Panzer Faust it. Stuart, though, is actually quite accurate against infantry, so it's something you should be a bit careful about, and it's still moving away. And again, you're going to need more than one Panzer has to do the job, Heinz. We're seeing trenches going up. And apparently he's not Panzer Fausting. So why is he doing it? And of course, I mean, I suppose a munitions half-track could work with Panzer Faust or anti-tank grenades, but again, it's... You're yeah, not the best thing, and don't necessarily want to rush in the half-track first if you want to keep at it. He's not even crudely... There and oh, climbing up your troops right in front of Stuart. Again, there's something called cancer shot, and there we go, squad almost gone. Retreat the squad again down to one man, always retreat. For heaven's sake, blood and roses. You're not really earning yourself any roses by this behavior. Retreat, retreat again. When a unit's moving like that, don't try grafting it with anti tank grenades. 
Not really, you know, solid anti-tank tactics. Gonna he's dealing, lacking something that can actually deal with them at range. We do see the Panzer farm that can do something, but he should have sent that instead instead of wasting troops on it. And those two light tanks. There we go, moving out. Armor command truck sneaking about, but apparently getting stuck in the shrubbery. Apparently, someone had something else instead of tea, and it rhymes with beer because it is beer. Panzer 4 moves in, Sappers not really able to do anything, Kedkrad here needs to be careful, troops need to move out, Schnell. Damaged engine, this dude is soon history, MG gonna add it. Out of control. At something, Kedkrads though are getting lost because again Blood and Roses are not really, is not really paying attention. We do see a follow up movement. He could use the hard tech to lay down a lot of mines. That could actually work for him. If he actually got moving with it. And the armor command track is in a bit of trouble already with the damaged engine. A high explosive round blowing up the engine. And clearly the driver again is drunk. And the Panzer IV is not stopping. We are seeing a mortar emplacement going up in the center. We're seeing the Brits hiding in the trench. Enjoying the view of the Corn Lake. Fortune Jaeger's moving in, inf infiltrating. Attention. You might want to pop off an, an anti-building grenade first before popping in. And he's actually setting up the truck. And looks like the captain went down. Fortune Jaeger's got him. Mine down there. Move it, move it. Move it, please. And it's gone. And it's gone. We're seeing butterfly bombs going down. Nice positioning and not within view of the enemy, although clip there. But again, why he's just leaving them there again, it's pointless and it's not really achieving much. It's just daft. Now we go more sniper fire. Needs to retreat them again. And he's calling in more fortune makers. Just get those out of there and get the other ones out as well. Although now of course there's holes being blasted in the building. I mean, more can actually sort of fire out that something with buildings. Although again, it's not 100% foolproof. Panzerfall moves in again. Escape. Retreat the fortune Jaeger blood and roses. Retreat. Unit preservation is not really strong. It's pretty poor in fact. Let's just leave it that. He's not retreating units, which ought to be. And again, he's just saying they're on the assault suicide paths. I mean, we're not playing with the Soviet army here, which will actually have anti tank grenades because they didn't have stuff like Panzerfix or Panzerfaust. And the Panzerfaust right here. Oh, retreat, I see us. Retreat. The Panzerfaust just tore through a horde of men. Double offensive veterans increasing the rate of fire quite viciously and also increasing in the accuracy and even the penetration of it, I believe. And there we go, still a light tank, taking quite a few shots from the rather rapid firing Panzer IV. Clear. But what is this? The Churchill Mark IV. Churchill. Now the Panzer IV though needs to get out of there. Lots of shots though bouncing off because they absolutely did not have the penetration power and Getting some anti-tank grenades, getting some panzer fast, but don't just stand about taking points while the Churchill's going in for annihilating your panzer fool, which is so far your only saving grace, mate. Now the Churchill though might make a mistake, it's exposing its rear, Stuart moving in, although heavily damaged. Panzer Faust, the Churchill gets some anti-tank grenades off, something, just don't stand there looking silly, and there we go, panzer fast going in. Some of the panzer fast shots are even penetrating, the Stuart could also go down to a panzer fast from the Fort Jaeger. No more munitions though. Fort Jaeger is appearing at everywhere. Apparently the Hammond going is giving up here and just relying on Kurt students, Fort Jaeger army troops. Churchill escaping. Panzer IV needs to retreat, get some repairs up. Some Luftwaffe troops would serve excellently in that regard. And there we, there we do actually. I mean, we do have finding some harassment, of course, securing more of the map from Blood. I see us, but again, you know. Blood and Roses could also definitely improve. He needs more Panzerfausting. Panzerfaust, mate. There we go. Rearmor hit. 
He gets squished though by the retreating Churchill and these troops are going to in exposed position. Need to be careful. And there's almost an infantry section reclaimed there. Down to one man and this is of course the point where he ought well down to two men but still ought to retreat. Ruik Suk! Don't waste your men. Please. Finally he gains a bit of sense. Panzer tries to knock it out but should be careful, should be careful. It is not impervious. Main gun destroyed though that might do the trick. Shots though bounce off. Quite the fortunate Churchill. Panzer goes with offensive efficiency knocking out the Rex's infantry section right here. And the infantry section should just consider getting out there. They're in a bad position. And there we go. Section is killed in action. KIA gone no more. And the Fortune Mega trying to panzer past the Churchill. At the same time, another armored command track is out. Slightly more conservatively placed. Cromwell command tank is out. With its dummy gun and lots of radio stuff. Moving up there. And this entire town has pretty much been covered in butterfly bombs. Forge Amiga is trying to knock this out, but not really having much success. Moving up then the center. Tank terror overwhelming the poor Forge Amiga. And there we go, Panzerfaust finishing it off. Not entirely sure what they hope the Cromwell Command Tank would do, but nonetheless, a small victory for the Forge Amiga and the Kampfgruppe. Now being more and more hastily reinforced with Forge Amiga. Now some of them even hiding in the trenches. Which the bridge player did not deal with. Again, the trick to usually abandoning them is not leaving them, but actually just pressing delete twice. That way the trench will also be deleted and the troops will pop up safely. And more importantly, you will not hand out whole world trench to the enemy. That's important. Stuart getting repaired here. Bren carrier has not been used at all, it's sort of been forgotten. Nobody wants to play with the Bren carrier. Going for the points there, going finally back to secure some of the victory points, not looking too good for Isaias and the 11th Armoured. Now calling on some of his Cromwells. Another Lieutenant. He's actually got more officers than he has infantry, or well equally amount, which is never a good thing. He needs more infantry. And he needs some minesweepers! Don't send them into a minefield, Isaias! I mean, you do have sappers who can be upgraded with minesweeper kits. That would have been better. That's just painful. Luftwaffe well troops arriving. Repairing the Panzer IV. There's still no real effort from Rotten Roses to really deal with the armor with any heavy anti-tank assets, which again is never a good sign. Infantry section reformed. Small victory there for ICS. Or LCS or whatever. Cromwell immobilized, getting hit at the rear with the Panzer IV rush in and fire away as well. Squad down again, not really good unit preservation from either player. They need to sort of work more on preserving their troops, you know, when they're in a bad condition. Retreat them, do not waste manpower. Again, you always want to preserve your infantry squads. Always. Always. And you should rarely sacrifice them unless you're really confident that the sacrifice will do more damage to your opponent. Or it's really desperate like, oh dear, I need to get the victory point, I'll lose. But otherwise, don't. It's just a waste. Always, always preserve your infantry squads. Always. And retreat rather than waste men needlessly if you feel you can't win the fight. And again, now calling in more butterfly bombs in the same spot. Not retreating the Fortune Yeager, so Stuart moves in. Brand Gunners moving in from the north. Not really looking good. Stuart moving through all the mines. Taking quite a bit of damage. Line is skirmishing up here. Recky Six moving into Panzer Grenadiers. More Stu mines, and the Stuart is immobilized. Will the Panzer Vor move in and knock it out? Panzer is up here and not doing too well either. The Kampfgruppe is taking heavy losses. There we go. The last man retreats behind a tree. The trench guys are still enjoying the trench. 
Now the mine goes off, still in return to dealing with it. Stuart! Of course, he's gone Luftwaffe, and he's got Luftwaffe for troops. So he could potentially consider laying down a flak 88 to sort of deal with the armor. And that could work, but of course now the sabers are moving up, and they're going to be repairing that Stuart. Luftwaffe troops now rushing in, dealing with that. Fortimegas moving in, offensive edge. Interesting enough, he's also not upgraded a single Fortimegas squad. And it's not to say they're bad without the upgrade, far from it, but they do perform much better with it. That should be greatly noted. Now there's some Luftwaffe troops hiding in the cafe. More mines getting hit again. No mines for effort at all by LCS. He could easily upgrade these chaps with minesweepers. Which would overall limit the damage he took, but it's not happening. And there's still no real great amount of anti-tank despite the Cromwells, despite the Stuart. And now a Firefly, there's still no real great attempt from the German player to get aimed into something that is remotely solid against it. He's not even going for Mardis. No Pantrotech. He's relying on anti-tank grenades and Panzerfaust to do the job. Probably some of the least effective anti-tank messages in the game. It's not really solid work at all. And he's using his Cromwell command tank to try and clear out some troops of a trench. I mean, he's got a few MGs, which will do very little towards infantry. It's in companies too that co actual MGs and all that will actually do something against infantry out in the open. Fulton is pushing in there. Still nothing greater in the anti-tank department. And not even a flag 88. More mines going off. Heavily damaging the Cromwell command tank again, popping some troops into a house. Still moving in there, opening up against the Fort Jäger, killing two outright. And these Fort Jäger just need to retreat, there we go. But again, I mean... Really, really poor unit preservation, and more... Worst of all, I mean... Really, really awful response to the opponent's armor. I mean, the only thing he has that can even, and that's only remotely combat the Stuart, is the Panzer IV. He doesn't have anything that can really take on a Cromwell. Nothing. And he's not doing anything to fix it. He's not doing anything to rectify the problem. That's terrible. Again, that's bad. You should always react to armor in whatever way you can. Panzer X being the sort of least effective and they're still there. Or, of course, the Panzer IV. Mardus. Or Panther battle groups or something, just not Panzerfaust and anti tank grenades alone. Again, it's not going to win you the war. We do finally see a flat 88 going down about damn time. But that's only going to cover one area, and for example, if the British player decides to proceed towards it, it's not going to do anything. And this is even worse because, again, as fighting against a Commonwealth player, you should always expect them to go for armor sooner or later, largely, always have something. And he's been much late, but we do finally have the Flugzeug Abwehrkanone 8, 8, or 36 actually, 36, or 36, to be more accurate actually, silly me. But it can't do anything against this up here unless they drive down here, otherwise I mean it's only going to be able to cover this area. Which is nice, but again not going to stop anyone from moving up here. And again, response versus armor, again, not strong. And he is absolutely rushing in for Jamiegas. Just swarming in with them. I mean, it's fun to watch. I mean, for Jamiegas are pretty awesome troops overall. In game and historically, but... He seems to think that for Jamiegas alone will bring him to victory. Which they won't. Armor moving in. For Jamiegas and Panzer is not doing too well. He could try with the flag 88 up here. Sabas here doing not too well against the Fortum Jaeger, although British armor is moving in to rectify that. And there we go, quickly getting dropped in seconds by the elite Fortum Jaeger. Firefly moves in. Oh dear, Fortum Jaeger at the crossroads need to get out there. The Fortum Jaeger's also need to pull back instead of move up. Flat feelings at the base getting wrecked. Perhaps a flak 88 in a desperate attempt to stop there, and also going for the victory point down there. 
And we are hearing the flag eight firing towards the church here, being held by the sappers. Panzerfaust. Falls to Mugus up here getting shot at as they retreat. More retreating. Church getting further bombarded, or is it just blasting out in the hedgerows? I'm not sure. There we go, looks like the Luftwaffe troops are moving away. The Panzer IV has laid down with the rear exposed, which is definitely not helping. We are seeing another 88 going up. Some more heavy AA and anti tank. Looks like the order to kill was actually gone down here, but let's return to Blood and Roses. Who seems to be greatly struggling again with the concept of armor. More Panzerfaust, which again is not really the primary response. It should sort of be an extra deterrent, but. Or something to finish off light vehicles. It should not be your primary means of anti tank I, in the war. It was great, but again, Relic rather nerfed it severely after pace, people basically spammed full scanners only and just rushed at the opponent with Panzerfaust. So they rather had to nerf it. Which, of course, is tragic, but that is life. But now his base is secure, which is something, but. He's lost pretty much most of the map. Because while certainly Isis is making a lot of mistakes as well, Blood and Roses is making some much, much, much bigger ones. Send your orders. And he's got one, two, three, four, five squads of Forge Amigos. He's basically spamming them. And he's not winning. And again, that also shows another thing, which is just spamming the infantry is not going to win you the game. It's not going to win you the war. Good tactics will you win the war. Using good tactics with good troops will certainly get you much farther. But just spamming good troops is not going to win you anything. Firefly firing, still moving in. Cancer shot and a Fortune Mega squad is gone. One man almost vanishing into the lake. Looking for troops running some light support. Moving in here against this flak 88. Fortune Megas from the trench providing support. And looks like something went down, but I'm not entirely sure what. Looks like some troops hiding in the building. Why did he hide them in the shed? That seems pointless, to be honest. Fortune Megas hiding in a crater. A suspiciously shallow one in the middle of the road, but nonetheless a crater. That might have something to do with the engine and not really being able to sort of show deformation on the terrain very well, which is quite fair enough. We are at Churchill hiding in the cemetery, the Churchill Mark IV, They've, which is in this case actually equipped uh, from what I understand with a six pounder gun, but by this stage, they're actually using ones with a 75mm gun, which would look actually pretty decent against tanks. But again, that would mean the Churchill might be a bit too tough. But again, the interesting thing is, under the Company Hughes 2 system, with doctrinal units, it might actually be able to sort of do it the other way, because again, by the looks of it, in Company Hughes 2, again, any sort of calling units will have to, or doctrinal units, will actually have to be built in a base, which means you need the requisite building. Meaning you can't just say one thing and then call in some heavy armor if you don't have the buildings for it. Meaning something like that is a lot less likely. And a third flag 88 covering down the main road here. Might be an idea to provide some protection so it isn't rushed, perhaps a flag feeling. Also, rather important to note, he still needs to attack. And he still doesn't have anything to really deal with that. And armor on the attack, because again, he's only got Panzerfausts. So again, Blood and Roses is making an awful lot of mistake. And there we go, Stuart down. Two butterfly bombs. Still no minesweepers. Forty Megas moving in towards the town. Going for this. Flak 88 opening up with the Churchill damaging the engine. Henschel up, but he doesn't have the munitions for it. And the Churchill is out of control. We're seeing the command tank move in, but much, much too late. The enemy's tanks do not stand a chance against our support. And a bit of veterancy for the flat crews. Hands for nearby. Forge Mega moving in. The Kampfgruppe has managed to stop, or at least stall, the 11th armored for now. But again, they're not stopped. 
And apparently again in great Soviet manner just charging through the minefields. Luftwaffe troops with the flag 88 are trying their best to hold back the British advance. But they are relentless and there's no flag feeling to help deal with infantry. Otherwise they probably would have won this. But now they are getting overwhelmed and the flag 88 is pretty much buggered. So that was not so well handled by the German player again. A few more Cromwells out though. And the flat crew is doomed. Gaining three kills about it, but that is it. In fact, the third man dies. Tank moves through the minefield. Soldier makers move about. Panzer achieves very little as well, and again can't deal with the Cromwell up there. Again, these sort of basic mistakes, which he seems quite insistent on continuing to commit without remorse or reflection. Henschel called in. Here's the thing to note, though, of course. Well, apparently the first strafe will sort of do something, but you still need line of sight for it to do or something. And as you sort of noted here, he just fired randomly. He didn't, couldn't he see the targets? Yeah, that one was a bit lucky. Nice OP overpowered unit smurf. I don't think he's a smurf again. He's a Monday novice fighter just like you. And if you're going to act like that, of course you're not going to win. But again, mainly the fault is yourself because again you didn't really fight the enemy properly. And seem to rely basically on fortune makers. I mean, for one who's sort of going about OP, you do seem to be relying heavily on one unit in the hopes that will again be overpowered and win you the fight. So, not really doing much better either. And Fortune Makers are basically just streaming in everywhere. And they're getting killed yeah, everywhere. I mean, the first Fortune Maker would definitely have suffered greatly because of your efforts, Blood and Roses. At the ready, Commander. Veteran 2 for the command tank, by the way, which is pretty nice. Greatly increases the fire rate of nearby tanks. Squad gone. Panzer 4 moves in. Fortune Jaegers moving in to have secured this bit. Finding a bit here. More tanks moving in. Fortune Jaegers up here not doing too well. In the center, the fighting intensifies. Fortune Jaegers getting gunned down brutally in the streets. And getting run off. The now the squad down. Flak 88 of course doing very little. And not much else. Now there's only Luftwaffe troops to hold the line in the name of the fatherland. And that's definitely been yawned their training. When they're facing down tanks. Let's return to Isaias. Send your message over. And let's speed it up a bit. Mount a counterattack or our cause is lost. Mount a counterattack or our cause is lost. Yes, Isaias, you have been a bit too passive, in fact. Panzer four charges in, just as the section man's in the point neutral, but also exposed itself to a lot of fire. It is veterancy free, which is nice. Offensive, in fact, but. Also a lot of smoke being knocked out, but at the same time it's placed right itself in front of a bunch of tanks. And there we go. Very few units left. Basically only Fortune Jäger and some Luftwaffe. And currently they're all back at base, more or less. You just... Oh wait, there's some Fortune Jäger down there south as well. Still not a lot. Lieutenant moving in, he still needs to clear this out with an infantry section charging infantry section charging in. Let's beat this up again. Not a lot happening. Fortune makes moving in from the north again, phasing off against Cromwell. Four hands of as you might notice again. Doing some damage, but not an awful lot. And they're getting murdered. Simply murdered. Massacred. I mean this isn't even a fair fight remotely again because Blot and Roses insist on just throwing in troops and hope the Panzerfaust will do the job. 
Sephiroth's pamphlets have entrusted me. Or at least told me that the Panzerfaust will do all right. But this is a game, Herr Commandant. They have been nerfed. Nein! They have not! You are a liar. Anyways, I mean, it's pretty pointless behavior from Blood and Roses. And again, we are seeing this sort of denial again there. Sort of nice OP units, Smurf. Why don't you make like a tree and go away? It's sort of like some sort of person from an American high school movie or something like, you know, Back to the Future. Another flag <laughs> going up right in front of the enemy. And the other one has been cleared out thanks to the mortar, which is certainly a nice response. The other flat. Oh no! Of course, mortar round clearly clicks, quickly clears out the crew. This is pretty much GG. Or as Blood and Roses would call it, BS. Then we go quite the Monday night fight. We saw quite some interesting things. We saw more Fortune Jaegers than I think I've ever seen in the game, and also more Fortune Jaegers than I would like to see get murdered brutally by a poor commander. Let's hope we never see that again. But again. We also see an utterly unfaithful, wavering faith in Panzerfaust and anti-tank grenades, while again, Admirable is absolutely misplaced. Again, they have been nerfed. You should be relying on Panzerfaust, Mardus, or Panthers or something else, and he never, ever, ever went for that. Ever. Ever. He relied on... He sort of grudgingly gave into flax, but again, really, really poor response. Again, you should always have some sort of proper anti-tank counter in your arsenal which sort of again depending on what you're going as uh, but against the Brits usually involves something with Panzer Strex initially or perhaps some Panzer Force to sort of hope in, in the start again against the Stuarts but again needs to quickly mount up to something bigger and I do mean bigger and tougher and again it never really happened and that was his main problem and he just kept throwing in elite units hoping they would do it but again they couldn't and again, that's also something you have to do again, you know, sort of, do they actually do what I want them to do, or should I just perhaps, you know, re-evaluate things? On the other hand, of course, the problem here was sort of, you know, a passiveness from my CS. You could actually done with some emplacements here and there, perhaps some artillery to sort of dig out the opponent. And again, you know, poor unit preservation, that was terrible on both sides, but also, you know, no minesweepers, despite the large amount of butterfly bombs being leveled down. No minesweepers whatsoever, that was terrible. So there you go. Hope you learned something from this match. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? Or perhaps write some feedback in the comments, so perhaps I can look at it that way. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. If you did, cheers.